Yeah, see, I can see right there. On each of the highest parts of my cheek, I have a patch of where it lifted my foundation. And I purchased them all myself, okay? Um, but this one, hi friends. Thank you so much for joining me here today for this video, which I'm super excited about. I'm gonna be using my brand new Sonia G Sheer Buffer for the first time. This is what the brush looks like. I have already washed this brush. Okay, that might not be helpful because it like matches my skin tone, but I'm trying to get you to be able to see the layer of the bristles. Can you see that up close? You can kind of see through. It's got a sheer top layer made of synthetic bristles. And then here, the base layer is natural hair, goat, uh, like goat hair. So um, this is supposed to be a cream cheek blush. Wait, what? <laughs> this is supposed to be a cream cheek brush. And honestly, you can thank me for this. And honestly, let me thank Sonia G for this brush because honestly, I feel like my video, I feel like my video testing out the Jumbo Bronzer when it first came out and the Niji Pro on the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer um, was the catalyst for this brush because neither of these brushes are meant to be used with cream products. These are best used with powder products. I was using my Niji Pro with my Charlotte Tilbury Cream Cheek, but I don't think that's really ideal for the longevity of the bristles. And these, these are really more for powder products. And I feel like because my video started picking up traction and too many people were possibly getting the idea to use these incorrectly, um, I think this was created in response to that. Because Sonia G literally advertised this brush with the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Cheek. And I feel like that was a direct response to my video. So thank you so much, Sonia G, for providing me a brush for my Cream Cheek Bronzer. I love this Cream Cheek Bronzer. Yeah, <laughs> I love this product so much. And I'm not usually a cream product kind of girl. So I didn't have an ideal brush for it. I was using the Jumbo Base, which has since been discontinued, um, but the problem with this is that because it's such a solid, dense surface area, it really would just pick up so much, and I'd have to be very, very careful and strategic about where I placed it. Then I would need to get another brush to blend and buff that out, and again, buffing out, let me show you. Typically, I would then buff it out with this. And again, these bristles weren't meant for this heavy whipped texture of this cream product. Granted, this isn't even as heavy as a lot of cream products get. So I feel like she literally wanted us to have the product ideally created for cream cheek products. So I'm very excited about that. I no longer have to just, we no longer have to make do and possibly damage our other bristles. Now we have something specifically for our cream cheek products. So I'm excited to try this on with you today. Let me get my hair pulled back and we'll demo the brush. So I did wash this brush as soon as I got it, hung it to dry in my Sigma drying rack and I'm really excited to test this out today. Here we go, first swipe. I'm not pressing down hard, I'm just swiping it around. Here's how much I've picked up. And so if you look closely, you can see that all of the longer hairs are well coated now. Not sure I got it down too far into the surface area, but I can tell that there is a little bit of product there at the top layer of the food aid bristles. So here we go. 
Mm, that's beautiful. I love the way that applies. It applies just like a powder brush would a powder product. Like it went on smooth, there was no patchiness, no dragging. I don't feel like I got any lift from my foundation. Let's try another layer. Now let's just try stippling it. Okay, so if you want a more intense application, you can push down so that you're getting that other layer of the bristles and then you can just buff it in like that. Let's just buff it into the top a little bit. Let's see. Okay. So there's a nice intense application. Let's do a really soft application over here. Let's see if I can bring the lighting a little closer. Is that better? I'm sorry, amateur hour over here, okay? Okay, so here's no product. Okay, on this side, let's just put on a really nice light wash. Yeah, see, that's a nice little light wash. See, you can get a really intense application or a nice, soft, more natural application. This side, I had really loaded up my brush and this other side, I barely did. So, that's cool. Just gonna take my foundation brush and tamp this side down a little bit. Okay, so this is what I feel like. Right there, I feel like this brush is gonna have a learning curve, okay? For me personally, this brush is gonna require a little bit of a learning curve period to learn how to use this brush to where it doesn't, where I don't press hard enough to get to the bottom layer to where it picks up my foundation. Because I feel like right there, can you see right there that one little spot? It's like where my cheek sticks out the most, okay? That's the highest part of my cheekbone. I feel like right there, I did pick up my foundation a little bit. So it is actually picking up my foundation a little bit. <laughs> That's my dog. All right. Yeah, see, I feel like it does look a little patchy. Let's see if I can blend it in. It does blend over nicely, but by the point that it's blending, I've already created the patch in my foundation right there. I think that's owner-operator malfunction. <laughs> Hi, that means me. I think it's my mistake. I just need to learn, like, I just, my hand just needs to get used to using this specific brush with a more lighter application. Because when I first just do the, the synthetic ones that stick out more, it does feel a little pokey. Like that feels pokey. If I just go really, ooh, if I just go really softly on the cheek, it does poke my skin. So I think because of that, and keep in mind, all this was happening like in one fell swoop instantly. So I'm trying to analyze in hindsight now and share with you my thoughts and experience to see if you can relate or you understand what I'm saying or if maybe it'll be helpful to you about how to use the brush or whether or not to pick it up. Anyways, the synthetic bristles are pokey on my cheek, okay? But I think that's why I was pressing harder to where once you start to press harder and you get a blend of the two bristles like that and they're both going on the skin, at that point it does feel softer and it helps to kind of take away that pokey effect of the synthetic outer edge. But by that point, I've already patched my foundation up in the application layer. And then once I keep buffing it, it smooths out, but I already have a patch here on the part of my cheek that sticks out the furthest. So 
Yeah, see, I can see right there. On each of the highest parts of my cheek, I have a patch of where it lifted my foundation. But it does look smooth. <laughs> like it lifted the foundation and then buffed it out over. So I don't know if that's going to be a design flaw. Like maybe there isn't enough. Hold on. Like maybe there isn't enough distance in this brush between the outer edge and the lower bristles. Like maybe not quite as much as this. I feel like this one is too much, okay? Um, although these synthetic bristles, this is a Real Techniques brush. Um, this is actually the, it's like from the diamond set or whatever, and it's number 027, okay? So this is the 027 from the like glam set or whatever. These synthetic stippling brushes here on the outer edge, let me feel, let me see which ones are softer. They feel the same, okay? So if you're good in general with stippling brushes overall, I think you might like this brush. However, because I personally feel like because the stippling part isn't long enough or isn't longer than the way that it was developed, I feel like it is patching up my makeup right there. So if I was able to make a request to Sonia G, I would ask her to just get the synthetic bristles to be a little bit longer so that there is a little bit more of a distinct different a difference in when the application goes on before you start buffing it because it really did it does seem to patch off on my big fat cheeks <laughs> yeah so I don't know do I regret picking up this brush um yeah a little bit I mean I don't know, at this point, I kind of am not 100% happy with this brush. I'm not gonna return it. <laughs> I'm gonna keep the brush. Um, but I do feel like the stippling bristles are too short and it, that's why it's patching up my foundation. So, cause see, yeah, even down here, it's patchy now. I've got patches of it right there. There's just not enough length on the synthetic bristles in my personal opinion. Now, I don't consider myself an, an expert to stippling brushes, but okay. I don't consider myself an expert on stippling brushes, but I do have a few that I really love. This one here is one of my favorites for foundation. It's very dirty, I need to wash it. <laughs> but if you'll notice, even on this one, like, the outer layer of the bristles are much longer than the difference between the Sonia G one, okay? And that provides a more airbrushed approach without, without dragging the product underneath. So, yeah, and honestly, I would say that the bristles here, just, just measuring from the top of the natural hair fibers to the edge. I feel like the synthetic bristles could go an extra 25% of that distance to be longer. I hope that made sense. God, I feel like I explained that in a really confusing way. But if we're just measuring from this edge up, okay, not like the whole length of the bristle. So not like 25% of this much, okay? Just 25% of this little section right here, okay? If we could get 25% more length added to the edge of the synthetic bristles, I feel like this would be a better performing brush. Now, when Sonia G tested it out, she might have not had this issue because, again, she's a professional makeup artist. <laughs> And she's a genius with brushes as far as using them. And she's got, you know, a lot more experience than I do. And so maybe over time, I will learn to not patch my foundation when I use this. So I'm going to try. 
let me let me get something to buff my cheek out because I'm driving myself crazy here. Okay, I'm gonna try to continue. Hold on. Okay, yeah. See, you can see the patchiness of my foundation everywhere. Okay. I'm gonna try to continue using this brush and see if I can figure out the application to where it won't patch up my foundation. So stay tuned for an update in about a few days. I'm gonna keep using this and testing it out on the daily. I'll update in about a week or so. Hopefully this brush will still be available so that if you want it, you can still get it. If you're waiting on any more videos to come out or whatever and you're trying to decide, then hopefully you'll be able to still get it at that time once my video goes up too. But um, otherwise, I would say as the brush stands now and with my current experience with the brush, I don't really think you need this one unless you're an expert on stippling brushes. Maybe, maybe, your, maybe your expertise would help your results perform better than mine did. But as you can clearly see right here, and again, I'm sorry for the snoring in the background. My 11-year-old Shih Tzu is tired. <laughs> um, again, you can clearly see the patchiness of my foundation where it has lifted in several spaces here, okay? So it might be user error. It might be a slight design flaw. I think it might even be, it's probably a little bit of both. Okay, because this might be um, perfect for like somebody who's got expertise level with makeup application in buffing brushes, I mean, in, in stippling brushes. But since these brushes are being made for the average consumer to be able to up their own personal makeup game, I feel like these bristles could stand to be just a little bit longer, the, the uh, stippling part could be just a slight bit longer and that it would probably perform better because I'm not happy with the way that my makeup patched. So, so yeah, I'm sorry if this comes off as a little bit negative. I certainly, certainly never imagined myself to be in a position where I'd be saying something negative about a Sonia G brush. <laughs> I love my Sonia G brushes. As you can see, I love my Sonia G brushes, okay? Most of this container is Sonia G brushes and I've purchased them all myself, okay? Um, but this one, this one isn't ranking as high up on my favorites list so far. I'm gonna keep testing it out, gonna keep trying to work with it, see if I can get over this patchiness. I'll update you in about a week or so. Stay tuned for that video. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it helpful or informative in some kind of way. If you do have any tips to help me in my personal application to where maybe I can avoid this patchiness, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I would love that feedback. I would appreciate it so much. And um, yeah. That's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to click the like button. And if you wanna hang out with me again, I would love that so much here on my channel. Make sure that you just subscribe so that you can catch my future uploads. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.